my friend Richard Foley, who is a state representative here. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Bailey. Now, I will be brief and I will get straight to the point. But before I do that, I want to paraphrase a story that was told by a Republican president on, the, on his last day of office. He passed away to, to bless his memory, but the, the, the speech that he made remains indelible in my mind and on my memory. And I want to just paraphrase that story so that we all understand what immigration is all about. He said, you cannot travel to Turkey and become a top. You cannot go to Japan, no matter how long you live there, and become a Japanese. If you go to China, regardless of how many years you spend in China, you will not become a Chinese. It is only the United States of America that you can come to and you become an American. That is what makes us different. That is why we are strong, because the United States draws its strength from every corner of the world. It is this diversity that is the strength that we have. Yes, sir. And that is the diversity that this government is trying to destroy yes, by putting people in cages. Now those people, those people are not running away from economic difficulty. They are running away from political persecution. And I have that experience, so I will recount it a little bit for you. I originally came from Nigeria. And to the best of my knowledge, there has not been any civil war in Nigeria. Now for the past more than 20 years after her independence, Nigeria was under one military dictatorship after another. If you have not lived under a military dictatorship, my gosh, you have no rights. They don't pass laws, they promulgate decrees. Now, because there has been a lot of uproar about military rule, what they have done, the military have simply, the top military brass have simply retired from the military, exchanged their army uniforms for a civilian role. They are back in power. The same military people that were persecuting people are back in power. They, are, they have never left power. It is true for Nigeria, it is true for any country that has ever been under military rule. If there is a change of character, the people that are in power are their cronies. And that system of suppression, of oppression, of kidnapping, of political assassinations has not changed. It will not change. It is going on right now as we speak in Nigeria. It is going on right now as we speak in any other country that has ever been under military rule. So the people you see who are in cages today are running away from political persecution. Where else is they found solace and peace if not the United States? And so I will tell you, regardless of who becomes the nominee come 2020, do not stay home. Do not stay home because that is what this government wants you to do. They want you to stay home. Do not stay home. Take yourself to the polls and make sure you vote. Bring a friend, bring a family member. But above all, when you speak with the candidates, tell them to make immigration reform a priority. Because that is the strength of America. And when we say never again, it means never again. Thank you. Thank you. Never again is now. Never again is now. Thank you. Uh, for those who don't know you, I'm the rabbi here in Concord at Temple Beth Jacob, and I'm here this morning with my, or this afternoon, with my five and a half year old daughter. And when we first arrived, she took me by the hand and she walked me over to the gate and the cage, and she asked me what this was. 
And I had to tell her that 75 years ago, this was done to our people in Europe because we were Jews. But that today, this is being done to people just like her who are trying to come up here from places in the south of where we live. My daughter's of Mexican descent, and it's very hard for me to look at this and recognize the repetition of history. Um, and that 75 years ago that would have been her, and under completely different circumstances than her birth and our adoption, that could very easily be her. Um, and I, in fact, I actually need to turn my back to it, because uh, I, I can't, I just can't keep looking at it. I'm going to offer a prayer. Uh, the the core part of the Jewish worship service is called the Amidah, which means we are standing when we say this prayer. It has several parts to it, and um, this is a, uh, in English, um, an interpretation of, on behalf of peace and immigrant justice. God of our ancestors, God of immigrants, God of refugees, we are all border crossers. We tie our fate with you who cannot be contained by customs offices, you who require no passport. You are the power that nurtures, you support the fallen, you free the captive. You give faith to, the, faith to those who sleep in the dust. We call out to each other, we turn in every direction. Your holy image is the face of every human. Help us to act with understanding. Return us again and again to your service. Forgive us for retreating to our own comfort. Forgive us for not taking responsibility. Forgive us for letting little fears stop us from helping with compassion. Release us from captivity. Release us from persecution. Release us from misfortune. Help us to heal when rational arguments are insufficient. Heal the suffering that causes people to flee their homes. All bountiful one, let every person live with abundance. Blast the great shofar for freedom. Gather in all those exiles. Restore justice with love and compassion, that all wickedness be lost. Protect all the righteous people fleeing war and fleeing poverty. Be with those who seek safety and seeking security. Build everlasting peace in our cities of peace. Plant your help in every land. Hear our voice. Hear the voice of refugees. Hear the voice of immigrants. Help us hear your voice. Take pleasure, God, in our work and lovingly accept our prayer. We give thanks to you. And this prayer always ends with a prayer of peace. And for peace, this afternoon, I offer the words of Emma Lazarus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame, with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here on our sea-washed, sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beaconed hand glows a worldwide welcome, her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep, ancient lands, your storied pomp. She cries with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Shalom and peace to all.